Hi everybody, my name is Travis, I'm the driveline guy at Solenax. We make a line of affordable, high quality, forged, fully machined slip yokes for most common performance transmissions. Today what I wanted to talk a little bit about is one of the most common questions I get here, how do I choose the right transmission slip yoke? Now, Sonics yokes are not direct OV replacement yokes. These are upgraded pieces meant to handle anything from everyday use to extreme street and track use. Therefore, choosing the right yoke is a complex matter for a couple of reasons. Let's say the yoke you have is not original to the vehicle that you're driving. Uh, if you've got a 1969 Camaro and you put in a 480 transmission with that yoke, well, that yoke isn't original to the 1969 Camaro. Or let's say we've increased the power of the car that we're driving and we need something that's gonna be a little bit more durable than this cast OV yoke. So in most cases, we're gonna to need to do a couple of things. We're either gonna to need to get some measurements off the yoke that you've got out of your transmission, or we're gonna to need to get some details about the transmission itself. So if you have the old yoke, here's a couple of things we wanna look at. First thing is pretty easy. We're gonna get a spline count. Easy enough, we're gonna count the splines inside the yoke, but keep in mind that some or most yokes have one spline removed. So if we counted 31 splines, one removed, it's actually a 32 spline yoke for a 32 spline output shaft. Next thing we wanna look at is a common length measurement, which is the center line of the U-joint hole to the end of the barrel. So we're simply gonna take a measurement from the center line of the U-joint hole to the end of the barrel. Next, we're gonna look at the U-joint hole and we're gonna take a diameter of the inside of that U-joint hole. So this will give us the cap diameter of the U-joint and also looking inside the U-joint hole here, notice there's an outside, there's a groove here, which is for an outside snap ring. Most of today's U-joints have an outside snap ring, but some older U-joints used an inside snap ring, so it'd be important to know that, note that if the yoke you have does not have a snap ring groove on the outside. And we want to take a measurement from the inside of that snap ring groove to the opposite snap ring groove. And then last, what we want to look at is the journal diameter, or the diameter of the barrel of the yoke. Easy enough, right? We're going to just put the mic on here. But this is where a couple of thousands are very important. So it's important that we use a really good measuring device like this mic here instead of just the tape measure because the difference between, let's say, a bushing tail housing and a roller bearing tail housing power glide transmission can be only two or three thousandths. So again, this is where a couple thousandths really matter. Now, if you don't have the old yoke, that's all right. We'll just need some information off the transmission and some information about the U-joint. Now, if you know what U-joint series you're going to use, that's great. Or if you've got the U-joint, we just need a couple of measurements off the U-joint itself. Really easy. We're going to need to know the cap diameter. and take a measurement on the outside of the cap here. And then we just need to know the distance between the outside of the caps here. This will help us identify what U-joint series you're trying to use. On the transmission itself, on the output housing, we're going to look for the ID of the seal. So we're going to take a measurement on the inside of the seal diameter here. And then on the output shaft itself, which obviously is going to be inside the tail housing, but I've got this one removed because I wanted to show you a couple of things. On the output shaft itself, we want to get a spline count. But uh, if you're looking at a Turbo 400 transmission, I wanted to point out that some of the Turbo 400 transmissions that came out of trucks had a bolt-on yoke. And a quick identifier for this is a threaded hole in the end of the output shaft. These output shafts had an O-ring inside them or have an O-ring inside, inside there where you're gonna need a yoke with a counterbore or an area of the splines have been removed so that it'll fit over this O-ring inside the transmission. Without that, the yoke get stopped on the o-ring and you won't get full movement of your drive shaft so if the splines removed you'll get full travel over that o-ring and speaking of tail housings some aftermarket tail housings like these from reed have a roller bearing inside instead of a bushing uh, you might find this in a turbo 400 a power glide a 480 a turbo 350 and some manual transmissions that are built for circle track racing if the transmission's been built for uh, extreme abuse and high horsepower applications, you may find this bearing in there and it's really important to note because the yoke that you need for the bearing has to be specifically specially designed and tempered so that the bearings don't eat into the barrel of the yoke. And on top of that, it has to be the right diameter. A yoke, let's say for a power glider with the bearing needs to be slightly undersized and a yoke, let's say for a Turbo 400 has to actually be slightly oversized to run properly on the roller bearing.
Our goal here is really to help you find the right slip yoke so you don't end up overpaying or underspecking your yoke for your build. Now there's one more thing we're running into a lot these days, which is a lot of modern muscle car builds have a transmission with a tail housing that doesn't have a slip yoke at all. Instead, they've got this bolt-on flange with a rubber hockey puck or a CV joint attached to it. And the good news is we've got you covered there too with a line of aluminum adapter flanges that are meant to help adapt these drive lines to a, a conventional U-joint style drive line. So I hope this has all been helpful to you. If I missed anything or if you have any other questions, feel free to give us a call or of course, uh, call your local drive line shop. For more information on our slip yokes and other drive line products, visit sonics.com.